In today's video, I'm going to be walking through how to make a simple uh, waiting lobby for any Godot multiplayer game. This is a part of my PvE series, so if you want to watch that, then go ahead and do that. But this will apply to basically any multiplayer game in Godot. So what we have right now is just a pretty basic uh, game here. We can host over Enet and then join. And we can just move around, and that's about all we have implemented so far. I wanted to take a step back and add a lobby system to this before we add shooting. So to get started here, we're going to come under our UI node and I'm going to actually make a new scene to keep this simple. And I'm going to make this a user interface node and we will call this lobby. Now to this, we're going to need a couple of buttons, one for starting the game, one for quitting. Um, and then in the future, we will walk through how to add usernames, but that'll be coming later. So let's go ahead and start by making a um, margin container. We'll call this title margin. Then we will add a uh, VBox container and then add a label to that. And we'll just put uh, waiting lobby in here. And I'm gonna call this title. I'm going to select the title margin container and center it on the top center. Then I'm going to come down to theme overrides and constants and give it a margin top of 20 pixels. Next on our title, we can come over to label settings, new label settings and set this font size to something a little bit bigger like 32. I'm also going to save this under game and UI. So now to add in our buttons and also where we're going to show our player, we're going to add a um, VBox container. I'm just going to call this uh, centered. Then we'll add an HBox container, call this uh, player cards. Then add another HBox container to the centered node and call this one controls. Then we'll add a button for uh, starting and then another button for quitting and we'll go ahead and give these both a text here so whoops start my caps lock is on start and quit game and now of course the centered node needs to be centered so we're going to put that there and then i'm going to go ahead and set up our player cards real quick so these will be in a uh, different scene because we're going to spawn one of these in for every single player that joins the game so we'll add a new scene this will be a VBox container, call it player card. Then we'll add a texture rect to this and then also a label. For the label, we'll just put player and then save this under UI. Then under the texture rect, I'm just going to go ahead and grab the player uh, texture. Put that right there. And I'm also, I don't know why I never did this, but move the player into the player folder just to keep things organized. So there we go. We now have a basic little uh, player card display. I'm going to come into this VBox container and set alignment to center. And then we'll come back to our lobby. And just to test out how this is all going to look, we'll add a couple of player cards um, to this here. And you can see it doesn't look quite right. So come into our player cards node here and set alignment to center. And we're also going to come to the controls and set their alignment to centered as well. Uh, also on this player cards node, I think it would look good if we had a little bit of separation. So we'll do that. And then finally, I want a little bit of a gap between these player cards and the uh, start and quit buttons. So come to this and we'll give it a separation of 70. And there we go, that's all of our UI set up for this. I'm going to delete all of the player cards out of here. And then instead of that, we're going to add in a multiplayer uh, spawner node. And we'll call this player card spawner. And then assign the spawn path to player cards. And on the auto spawn list, we'll add in that um, player card scene that we made earlier. All right, so there we go. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually handle all of this stuff. So what I'm going to do is attach a script to this called lobby, and then we'll need a couple of things here. First thing I like to do is just make an exported variable, call it host controls, and this will be an array of control nodes and set it to an empty list. And then I'm going to make a function here called setup screen. This will return void. And this is basically going to run whenever we switch to this uh, lobby screen. 
because we're not going to switch scenes like you would. Typically, we're just going to hide and show uh, different things in our main game scene. That just keeps things simplified because Godot does not handle switching scenes over the network very well. So I like to do it this way. What I'm going to do is just if not multiplayer dot is server. So in other words, the client that this is running on is not the server. So we want to hide all of those host controls. So for C and host controls C dot hide. The reason I did that is we don't want this start game option. You only want that to be available to the host. So what we can do is come to this host controls that we just made and add that element to it. So that's the start button. And now that will automatically hide that button from all the clients who are not a server. So now we want to go ahead and set up those player cards. So what you can do here is just in an else statement, we'll go ahead and instantiate a new player card. So if our PC is equal to player card dot instantiate, and we'll need to make this variable as well. I'm just going to export a variable called player card with the type of packed scene. And then on our right here in our inspector on the lobby, just make sure that you assign this um, to that player card .tscn. We'll also need access to this player cards node. So I'm going to export a variable called player cards, and this will be a um, hbox container. And then again, go ahead and set that to player cards. And now what we can do is player cards dot add child PC. And now what I want to do next is go ahead and test this. So what we can do is come to our game scene and then add in this lobby.tscn to our UI. And now we obviously don't want to show these on top of each other. So we're going to make a new script on our UI to handle switching between these screens. So create a new script on that node there. And now what I'm going to do is from our connection manager, we have these two signals here. So I can connect both of these to our UI node like so. And then I'm also going to make a function here called switch to, whoops, switch to lobby. This will return void. And then all we need to do is connection manager dot hide and then lobby dot show. Then we'll just call switch to lobby in both of these. Now in our lobby, we need to trigger this setup screen function. So I'm going to come into here and connect the um, visibility changed signal. So connect that to the lobby script. So now what we want to do here is just say if visible, then set up screen. All right, so now let's come back to our game and by default, we want to hide this lobby. So if I run this and then host via Enet, you can see that works there. And then if I join, nothing happens yet. So we only have the servers uh, player card appearing so far. So let's come back into our lobby and then what we want to do is say multiplayer dot peer connected dot connect. And now I just like to use a Lambda function here. This will take in an ID, which is an integer and return void. So every time a peer connects, we want to make a uh, player card for them. So I'm going to make a variable called client PC or client player card. And this will be equal to player card dot instantiate then we'll just simply um, player cards, then we'll just simply do player cards dot add child client player card. And now if we run this again, I'm gonna host over here and then join, you can see it appears, but not for the client. So you can see we get an error here, unable to auto spawn node with reserved name. So to fix this, what I like to do is just set this client pc.name equal to the string of their ID. And I'm also going to do the same for the server player card. So pc.name is equal to one. And now if we run this again, host join, you can see we now get both player cards, but obviously we're able to play the game before we actually start it. We're going to make a signal called started game up here at the top. 
And then we're going to obviously need to connect the start game button to our lobby. And then all we're going to do is just call uh, game or start a game dot emit. So now back in our game scene, what we can do here is connect this lobby started game uh, signal to our root game node. Now, obviously our spawning logic is going to change because we don't want to spawn in a player every time someone connects because now we're waiting until everyone's connected to spawn in players, if that makes sense. So instead of this, we're going to spawn in a player for every single connected peer when we start the game from the lobby. So what I'm gonna make here is a new function called spawn players. And then this will be just simply world.spawn player. Uh, one for the this is uh, the servers player and then we're also going to create a player for each connected peer so for peer in multiplayer dot get peers we're going to spawn in a player so world dot spawn player and then we'll just pass in that peer so this loops through all the connected peers returns a integer array and each integer in that array is their peer ID. So we can go ahead and just delete this function up here. And then when our game starts from the lobby, we'll just spawn players. And now if we run this again, you can see if we host, we no longer get a player spawning in. And if we join, you can see everything works. And now if we click start game, the players both appear. So now there's an issue and that is that this lobby node does not disappear when the game starts. So you might think, well, we can just come down here when we start, when we press that start button and just call hide. And I'll show you what happens when we do that. You can see it disappears for the server, but it's still there for the clients. And that's because this function only ever gets ran on the server because the server is the only one who can press that start button. So we need to make this effect take place for each client. So what needs to happen is we call this on each client. And to do that, we'll use something called an RPC function. Now to keep things clean, I'm going to keep this function in our UI node. So I'm gonna make a new function here called hide child. This will make it take in a path with a type of node path and return void. Then all we need to do is just get node path dot hide. Now we need to call this function. So I will come into our lobby here and connect this started game signal to our UI. I'm gonna just reorder these. All right. And then all we have to do is call this hide child function. And then we want to hide the lobby. We're still going to run into the same issue here. It's still not disappearing on the client, and that's because we haven't marked this as an RPC function. We need this function to run on every single client, so we can mark it with RPC. Now, when you use RPC functions, you do have to call them differently. Simply calling hide child lobby like we are here will still only treat it as a normal function and won't propagate it to all the clients. So to fix that, we will call RPC at the end of it, and then we'll pass in whatever parameters for this function. In this case, we wanna pass in lobby. So there's two functions for calling RPCs. This is the one we're gonna use right now, but you may run into a need where you only want to call this function on certain peers. So you can use the RPC ID, and that will take in the peer ID that you wanna call this function on, and then the parameters after it. But for now, we're just going to stick with uh, just the basic RPC function. Now, if we run this, we'll get an error and I'll show you how to fix that. Now you can see the opposite is happening. It's disappearing on the client, but it's still here on the server. So the default functionality for RPC functions is to not call them on the server and instead propagate that to all the clients instead. And that's because in a lot of games you would have you know, the server isn't actually a player, but we're doing peer to peer here. So what we can do here is RPC, we can pass in different uh, flags here. So in this case, I want to make this call on the server as well. So we can pass in this call local flag. And there's a different, a lot of different flags here and you can see them all in the docs, um, but we won't get into all of them right now. 
But basically, call local will call it on the peer that this function was called from as well. And there we go. We now have a basic lobby system for our peer-to-peer -peer PvE game. Now to finish things off here, we need to hook up this uh, quit game button. So all I'm going to do for now is just connect it to here and then we'll make a signal here called quit game and then just emit that. So quit game dot emit. And now back in our UI, what we can do is uh, connect that signal. So uh, quit game and then connect that to our UI. I'm going to move this up again. There we go. This doesn't need to run on the network. This just runs on the client side. So just do uh, lobby hide and then connection manager dot show. And then when we quit the game in our lobby, we need to make sure that we uh, disconnect from the server. So we will go ahead and do multiplayer dot multiplayer peer dot close. And that will disconnect us from the game. And then to finish up, the last thing we need to do is remove this uh, client player card whenever a player disconnects. So multiplayer dot peer disconnected and then connect this to a Lambda function. So then what we want to do now is get that client player card. So client PC is equal to player cards dot get node and then pass in that ID. With that done, we can just call client player card dot Q free and we should be good to go. If we run this host via Enet and I join quit game, you can see I get brought back to here. I can also join back. So with that all said and done, I hope you guys found this video useful. If you guys need any help, questions, comments, feedback, feel free to drop them in the description. I also made a Discord server so you can get help there as well. So I will catch you guys in the next one.